Hi, this is Kurt, and I'm with Traverse Tool Company. Today, I'm going to get that vise mounted on this table, and I'm going to indicate it to make the vise jaws exactly true with the axis of the table or with the T slots. Before we get started on anything, let's think about safety first. So, I know I'm not machining anything here, but it's a good habit to get into to uh, take care of safety concerns, even though we're not making any chips. So first thing you'll notice, there's no cutting tool in the quill, in the, um, in the milling machine. I'm going to take my watch off and my ring. And over here, I'm going to put safety glasses on. And these might come in real handy if you're going to be blowing out the vise, get to get chips out of it, to clean it out or, or anything like that. Even spraying the, uh, the rust uh, prohibitive um, might splash back or something like that. So safety glasses are always a good idea. The things that I'm going to be using to get this vise trammed or indicated uh, in the milling machine is obviously the machine vise. And you can't talk about a machine vise with this nifty speed handle. It really speeds up the process of opening and closing the jaws. Um, I have some lubricant here, penetrating oil. Um, most importantly, it's, in it's a rust inhibitor, and I don't want this machine to rust or the vise, so that's important. I have two indicators. One has a magnetic base on it that I'm going to mount on the table of the milling machine. The other one has a spindle mount that I'm going to mount on the spindle of the milling machine. I have a stone here. It's 320 grit on the finer side, which is the side I'm going to use. It's oil impregnated. I'm still going to spray it, though, because you can't overdose on, on lubricant when, um, when it comes to uh, protecting your, your machinery. Uh, I have the T-nuts and the bolts for the vise, the wrench for the, the, the uh, T-nuts, a dead blow soft mallet that I'm going to use to tap the, uh, the vise to get it trammed. Obviously a rag and don't forget about the safety glasses. I know we're not cutting anything. We're not making any chips, but it's just always a good practice whenever you get around a milling machine or anything that, that cuts metal or wood for that matter. Um, basically anything, um, you should be protecting your eyes. So that's what I'm going to use. Let's put them to use now. Next, we're going to get the vise mounted up. Before I do that, I'm going to spray the machine down a little bit, the bottom of the vise. I know it's kind of messy, but it's a lot better than getting rust on the machine or on the vise. So when I put the vise on, I'll slide it around just to feel for any chips that might have uh, collected underneath it. And I don't feel anything. So here's my T-nuts and bolts. I'll put those in. Then I'm just going to clean up the excess oil around here. So I'm going to take my wrench and I'm going to tighten the nut on the left. This is a tricky part that some people don't know about. So I'm going to get it fairly tight, but not extremely tight yet. The one on the right, I'm just going to leave it loose. Reason I'm only tightening one, that's going to act as a pivot point for me. That's going to make this process a lot easier. So what I did here is I mounted an indicator right on the table that's going to move with the vise and with the table. And I also mounted another indicator on the quill of the machine that's going to stay right there. So this way I'll be able to keep one on one side and the other one's going to move back and forth. So I have the one, the stationary one zeroed. Now I'm going to go ahead and zero the one that's attached to the spindle of the machine. There we go. Both indicators are on zero. Now you can see that I have both indicators on the zero. So the one that's mounted to the table is this one. That's on the zero. The one that's in the spindle is also on zero. Now I'm going to move the vise across the x-axis. 
just to see the one on the spindle. And you can already see it's going way past five thousandths. There's ten thousandths of an inch. So it's pretty bad. And I'm going to bring the vise over to and stop it just before the indicator point comes off the vise. Now I'm going to take a dead blow soft mallet and I'm going to tap on the back of the hammer to get the needle to move in the uh, indicator in the spindle. So I'm just going to give it light taps. You can see it moving. Going to get it somewhere around zero. All right, now I'm going to stop and check our other indicator. And I see that that moved also about two thousands. So I'm going to go ahead and keep tapping and get the indicator in the spindle equal to the indicator that's mounted on the table. Okay, so they're both right at two thousands. I'm going to zero again. Or I could just leave them both at two, but I'm just going to zero them. And there we go. Now I'm going to bring it back again. So now you can see the indicator is right on zero. So that, um, that vice is less than a half. It did move a little bit in the center, but the vice is less than a half a thousandth or less than five ten thousandths of an inch off. So I'm good with that. So now I'm going to tighten the vice down. I'm going to start with the loose nut. So remember, I, I tightened this one up somewhat so that when I tap the vice, it would pivot on, on this nut. So now I'm going to start with the loose one. And while I'm tightening, I'm watching this, this needle and I don't want to see it move. So I'm just going to go real easy with it. I'll move over to this one, get this one a little bit tighter. And then finish up again on this side. Okay, the vise is tight. One last check. And that's it, our vise is good. So as you can see, we got that in one shot. And um, I have myself, and I've seen many other people wrestle with these things and go back and forth countless times trying to get that, that needle to uh, stay on zero at both sides of the vise. And the trick is tighten the, the nut on the left or the right. It doesn't matter. I just, to be consistent, I just tighten the one on the left, leave the one on the right loose, and use a second indicator. So you can see if it does move at all, you can see how much. And then just adjust the, the indicator in the spindle to whatever the stationary indicator is. So thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something with this video and uh, I hope that your day is a little bit easier just for watching it.